Hello, and welcome back to the Express 11 Road to Glory series, where we have a very important game against second in place Spud United. If we win this game, we have a small chance that making a small chance of making it into the playoffs come the final game of the season. If we fail to win, however, Spud United are pretty much nailed on for a top two finish. So, let's see what the teams look like before we see how the teams will line up. Well, Spud United's squad hasn't really changed one bit. They're still mega strong, but also very, very old. Compared to our squad, which isn't nowhere near as strong as Spud United, but has a lot of young players and a lot of growth and potentials, and perhaps be even stronger than Spud United are currently. Nessa said only a lineup in a 4 5 1 formation with Gio de Horn goal, a back four of Nathan Thompson, Pim van de Kreese, Aquila Santa Maria, and Marcus Akenfjord. Midfield of Sergei Kivyakovsky, Pierre of Hesting, Alvito Roma, Glenn Carlton, and Raymond Hargreaves. A front low man of Celso Mota. Spud United, meanwhile, have a 3 5 2 formation with three convoy in goal. A back three of Christian Carlson, Fate Ake Emlong, and Charis Rossov. A midfield of Fasto Largo, Karasti Shakuna, Alexander Patiev, Karl Gunnar Torna, and Daisuke Matsukawa. And a front two of Ash Hosman and Natalie Golovnia. Let's go live to Supermassive Black Hole for the final home game of the season. Captains for this match are Gio De Hoare for Nazi Sedani, as he has been always throughout the season, and Carl Gunnar Torna for Spud United. The referee is Manuel Fikus, skill 2, harsh to state. Nazi Sedani are in the red and yellow strip and play from left to right. Spud United are in the yellow and black strip and playing from right to left. The other games in the division see Gorgi Fissel against Deportivo Sersol, Real Real Madrid in a mid-table battle with CDF Jimbo Pogo, and Republic of Mancunia in a relegation fight with Worcester Buccaneers, although I believe Republic of Mancunia are already getting close to relegation and our Worcester Buccaneers. So, as the team shake hands, the referee gets the game underway... NOW! And, quite not surprisingly, Spud United have a good chunk of possession early on, and Kerestin Shaku has been yellow card for dangerous play. And this is probably why there's an injury for the Knights. Pierre of Hessling has been of a slight injury. After Raymond Hargreaves injured last week, a in which he's only just recovered to play, Pierre of Hessling has picked up a slight knock, and that's not going to do good for his form at all. Free kick for the Knights. Strong goal by Glenn Carlson. Pushed away by Street Convoy. Well, uh, that's a good start for the Knights, but unfortunately, we've got another chance though. Celso Motor. As close as the crossbars, and we're having some pretty encouraging play here as Republic of Mancunia are looking like they're having a difficult time against Worcester Buccaneers, who are above them in the league. First half has run into a close, and currently we've had a few chances, but we haven't been able to score yet. Alexandra Patti has been yellow carded for handball for Spud United. 42 minutes played, and we have another chance just before half time. Well played, set by Glenn Carlton. Here's the left post. Ow! So close, but Convoy seems to be proving very difficult to beat for Spurn United, which is probably why they're in second place at the moment. Half time, and Knights have had three chances to nil, but Spurn United have just edged the possession. Don't be fooled, we had dominated the chances early in the season, and they went on to win the game after coming out flying in the second half. We're about to get the second half underway now! And we're going to place Ibrahim Kamara on for Nathan Thompson, and a reverse sort of change of what we did in the previous time. 63 minutes played, and it's still nil-nil between Knights of Zedder and Spud United. Spud United in the second place, they have their first attack of the game with another outside from Ash Hosman. And he scores! Ash Hosman gives Spud United the lead in their first attack of the game in the 62nd minute. A hard done by a bit of bad luck there, but unfortunately that's what happens sometimes. We've got a miss section on goal by Lashley Golovnia. Saved by Gio Dehor. Spud United are starting to show their true colours a bit, they have Clinicality of Ash Hosman to score his first chance and speculation like they're gonna go on and dominate this game now. And actually Golovnia has the skin over the skins over the crossbar, his header was so close. 77 minutes played and unfortunately it looks like we're gonna lose, but we have a dangerous free kick here. We have a free kick showing by the way, Glenn Carson, can he beat Conboy? No, Conboy makes a leg save. Seems whenever we throw at this Spud United goalkeeper, he is easily capable of saving. We've got a powerful header by myself, so Mota and brushes outside the post. Mota has been our top scorer this season, but even he can't do anything about it. We go well placed shot on goal by Sergei Kivyakovsky. He scores! Sergei Kivyakovsky, the old Star Wars who's been here for five seasons now, has equalised for Knights of Sardinia and claimed a point which we might have got a win from. A driving shot on goal by Raymond Hargreaves. And is caught by Convoy. 
Well, Kikakowski was could be an inspired performance to take a point against one of the strongest teams in the division, but it's not going to be enough. Bad as that. End of the game. We're definitely going to be finishing in third place in this division. Even despite the fact we dominated the chances 7-3, to Spain United were too strong and too clinical with their own, and as a result we come away with a 1-1 draw. But that's not such a bad result. Sergio Kivyakovsky is man of the match for the Knights, while Daisuke Matsukara was man of the match for Spud United. So, I guess the strongest team in the division we come away with a 1-1 draw at home. I'd say that's a very good result. So, but this season the only opponents we haven't beaten are the ones that finished in the top two. I think that shows that we need to improve some bits, but it also shows that we're getting close to be able to seal a return to Division 5 in the near future with the young squad that we are developing, as they have had the majority of the inputs into our success this season. Aside from perhaps Marcus Agenfjord, who's sadly retiring at the end of this season, but he has won the front runners for the MVP award, which will net us a nice extra econ boost come the end of the season. Still, we managed to get draws against both the teams at home, so who knows what will happen. Maybe if we can try and turn them into wins, we might be able to progress to the next division, possibly even securing the first winner's medal for this club. Anyway, let's see the team of the week and see who, which of our players made it in, if any, did at all. Team of the week this week is three convoy of Spud United and goal. A back four, Theo Connings, Deputy Resursal, Jack Fowler, Real Real Madrid. Marcus Agenfjord, Knights of Sardinia, and Igor Moskov, Spud United. A midfielder Sergei Kivyakosti, Knights of Sardinia, Daisuke Matsukawa, Spud United, Murdiech Olaya, CDF Jimbo Fogo, and Harry Trundle, CDF Jimbo Fogo. And a French with Ash Hossman, Spud United, and Anatoly Golovnia, Spud United. So Spud United got four players in there. Marcus Agenfjord took the lead in the MVP standings last week after he was the only one to appear in the X11 without Harry Trundle and Jarrett Fowler appearing in there. Both Trundle and Fowler have captained the X11 in previous weeks, Marcus Agenfield hasn't. Therefore, Marcus Agenfield has to appear in the X11 in the final round of the season, or for Harry Trundle and Jarrett Fowler to fail to make it into the X11 for the final game of the season. Liga Blue Grey of Worcester Buccaneers got manager of the round for his away victory over Republic of Mancunia, but unfortunately it came a bit too late for him. As they are now 5 points to safety, their return to Division 7 after just one season Division 6 is confirmed. DV is looking very promising, although perhaps maybe it could be a bit better in some places. Still though, we have every single youth in our squad on at least 16 DV. And on top of that, we've got 3 players on 17 DV and 1 on 18 in the Pim van der Kreese. Raymond Hargreaves and Pierre Pessing maybe could have been on 17 DV by now, but injuries have inhibited their progress in form, and they may have to wait until the last game of the season to be able to get to 17 DV. Not everyone actually might make it, because there's a bit of concern over the defence with so many 16s, Especially Aquila Santa Maria on 16 and Alvito Roma, who may not make it up to the required 17 mark. Or at least it was the required mark, but now the team is getting a bit older, perhaps we should have a lower standard of DV that we should be aiming for for all of them. So, Worcester Buccaneers take the final relegation place and will join Republic of Mancunia and Deputy Vercel in, in Division 7 next season. We are confirmed to finish third, being 5 points off Spud United in second place but also a whole 9 points ahead of CDF Jim Bavogo and Real El Madrid. The fight for the title is going to go down to the final day of the season. Automatic promotion is still not yet decided and Spud United could still take it on the final day of the season, despite the fact that Gorgi Fissel have got 34 points throughout this whole season. Spud United on 31 points and in the final match of the season, Gorgi Fissel play already relegated Republic of Mancunia and Spud United play 4th place CDF Jim Bavogo. You have to say it would look pretty good for Gorgi Fissel. Anyway, next time will be the last episode of this season, the season finale of season 33, in a season where we've sort of been middle of the road, haven't really been going anywhere, but it was still an important step in the development of this team, and hopefully next season will be the one where we start to kick on and this series will really get going. I've been the A person, and I'll be used to see you next week for the season finale of the Expert Level Road to Glory series season 33. Goodbye.